South Australia is already leading the nation. Today we lead the world. We're announcing the world's largest lithium iron battery. That battery uh, will be built uh, in Jamestown, just a few hours uh, from the centre of Adelaide. It will be a partnership between Tesla and also NeoEng. Tesla, of course, one of the most exciting technology companies in the world, and NeoEng, one of the most reputable renewable energy companies in the world uh, coming from France. This project uh, will provide uh, for 100 megawatts of battery storage. Uh, it will be associated with the Horndale Wind Farm, uh, which uh, is located in that same area in Jamestown. What it will do is completely transform the way in which renewable energy is stored and also stabilise the South Australian network as well as putting downward pressure on prices. This has been uh, an extraordinary collaboration on an international basis. And I want to thank all of those who have participated in bringing us to this day. Uh, it's been uh, an incredible journey. Uh, on the 9th of February, uh, we had um, an unnecessary load shedding event. Uh, coming on top of the blackout that occurred back in September, South Australians were shocked and I think uh, had completely lost confidence in the national electricity market. What they were demanding uh, of their elected representatives is they stand up and take control. So the next day we did just that. We stood up and said that we would produce an energy plan uh, that takes charge of South Australia's energy future. Uh, that energy plan uh, was uh, developed over the, the six week period uh, up until the 14th of March. And one of the central elements of the, the plan that we developed uh, was the nation's largest battery. Today, what we're revealing is the world's largest lithium-ion battery, a grid-scale battery that will provide stabilisation services to the grid, uh, have the capacity to make a very serious dent in the $48 million worth of SCAS services which are purchased from the Australian energy market, uh, putting down with pressure on prices here, also opening up new possibilities for renewable energy uh, in this state, in this nation and around the world to be dispatchable. Renewable energy providing firm, essentially base load capacity for people and industrial users to power their businesses. So it starts here in South Australia. We had about 91 uh, bidders, international bidders, uh, to this um, process. Uh, of course, uh, that was assisted by a little bit of uh, Twitter exchange uh, in the few days before we released our plan between Elon Musk uh, and also Mike Cannon Brooks. And um, those 91 bidders uh, were carefully assessed, and I want to thank all of them for the way in which they participated in the process. We did. Um, come to a view that there was a superior bid, and it is this partnership uh, between NeoN and Tesla, and we're thrilled to be able to announce today that that is the winning consortium that is going to put this project together. I want to also uh, thank um, the, the teams that worked on this. In particular, uh, I want to thank uh, the team in, in South Australia, led by Tom Kutsantonis, our Minister for Energy, the team he assembled uh, in his agency, led by Sam Crafter, and really an extraordinary group of South Australians who worked incredibly hard to make sure that um, this incredibly important timeline, that is the 1st of December, the beginning of summer, uh, was going to have the delivery of this battery. Uh, one of the offers that um, was made very early on in the process by Tesla was that uh, from the signing of the grid connection agreement, uh, they would deliver this battery within 100 days or it is free. It's an extraordinary offer and it's one which is now being committed to and is part of the contractual arrangements. And uh, that's a fantastic degree of security that South Australians have, that we will have this in place by the beginning of summer. Uh, I want to also thank um, the, the people who have negotiated with us, uh, both NEO and Tesla. It is been an incredibly tight timeline, 
to complete what are incredibly complex negotiations. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure now uh, to introduce you to the uh, International Head of Energy for Tesla, uh, Cal Langton, and also the Chief Executive Officer of Tesla, Elon Musk. Thank you. So we're here to um, answer your questions and uh, on the topic of the battery. And uh, if anyone has a question, <laughs> far away. Well, no Mr. questions, Smithson. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Musk, uh, Mike Smith of Channel 7. Is, do you see any risk in this at all? Your reputation, global reputation, is at risk here. South Australia's energy situation in the past has been seen as sometimes a joke and sometimes right. disastrous. How do you place it with your reputation? Well, we, we thought about this, and there is certainly some risk, um, because this is going to be the largest battery installation in the world by a significant margin. Um, the, the, this is a 100 megawatt uh, battery installation. The next biggest battery uh, system in the world is 30 megawatts. So we're talking about something that is more than three times as powerful as the next biggest battery installation in the world. Um, and we've, we actually insisted in writing, in, in doing the contract that, um, that we be held to the 100 days or it's free. Because that's what we said publicly, that's what we're going to do. I'd also like to, to thank Mike, Mike Cannon Brooks for <laughs> um, <laughs> to, <laughs> talking smack with me on Twitter um, and, and kind of getting, getting that. Um, I think he deserves, deserves some credits there as well. Um, oh, sure. How, how much will it cost you if you don't live up to that commitment? Go 101, 102 days, what's it going to cost you? Um, a, a very large sum of money. <laughs> um, I don't know, probably $50 million or more, I don't know, a lot. Your, your, um, one of your other projects in California was worth about um, $5 billion, I read. Couldn't um, I don't think, not $5 billion, no. Oh. <laughs> that, that was the 80 megawatt hours um, no, no, I think there's a few digits missing there. Um, so, um, How much is this going to cost in total? I'm not sure if we, I'm, I'm not sure if that is, is something that we, we, we can discuss, but it, it was, is that public knowledge or not? It is not, no. It is not, okay. So, I think we can't say the exact, the exact number, but um, we'll certainly leave that up to uh, South Australia if they want to disclose it, but it's, um, there, there are sincere three parties, uh, Neo and Tesla and South Australia, we, we, we would not speak for them uh, unless they, they agree as well. Th this, this is significantly bigger than um, the, the project in California, um, which was the, when, when, we got, when we brought that online in December of last year, that was the biggest battery in the world. Um, but that, that, uh, that system is approximately 20 megawatts in power, and this is 100 megawatts. So it's, it's a massively different thing. In fact, I, I really think that like the, the, the the most salient point here is that the system will be three, three times more powerful than any system in the, on Earth. This is, a, this is not like a it's sort of a short, like a minor foray into the frontier. This is like, you know, going three times further than anyone's gone before. And maybe, actually, if, if I may add something. Yeah. So, so beyond focusing on the costs, so the, the interesting thing about this plant is it's actually going to lower costs for consumers in that, South that's Australia. That's a very important point. So. Uh, as opposed to, to being something that costs taxpayer money or, or is, is uh, the largest of the public is actually going to provide price stability, market stability, yeah. and lower prices overall for customers, especially at the summer peak months. Just point. Point. What's, the, what's the technical challenges? I mean, it's just the normal technical challenges that come with, with scale. Um, so when you make something three times bigger, does it still work as well? Um, we think it will, but there's certainly some risk in that. Um, and. Uh, I mean, we're confident in our modeling techniques and in the design of the system, uh, but whenever you make something three times bigger than anything that's come before, there's always some risk. Mr. Musk, can I just uh, ask up the back here? <laughs> okay, sorry, it's hard uh, to tell. Sorry, just over oh, here. Okay. <laughs> um, what will the battery be used for? Will it be used for arbitrage or simply stability services? And when you say 100 days or it's free, who is it free for, Neon or the South Australian taxpayers, or both? Well, I think it's for the pri primarily the free would be for South Australian taxpayers. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it, ha it has the grid stabilization is, is a huge factor. Um, as uh, Cal was saying, 
Um, because it's able to stabilize the grid and buffer power, um, it, it, you, you can essentially ch charge up the battery pack, battery packs when you have excess power and wh where the cost of power production is very low, and then discharge it when the cost of power production is high. And this effectively lowers the average uh, cost per kilowatt hour to the, to the end customer. Um, it's a fundamental efficiency improvement of, for the grid. It's, and it's really quite necessary and, 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 and quite, quite obvious when sort of considering a, a renewable energy future. When you have wind or solar, it's obviously not windy all the time, and it's, it's clearly not sunny uh, 24 hours a day. So you have to buffer the power um, and, um, and store the power during the middle of the day in order to discharge it in at dawn, at dusk, and night. It's really not complicated <laughs> in that sense. It's really, really quite straightforward. And then for, for wind energy to store it when it's windy and discharge it when it's less windy, this, this is extremely important fundamental. In, in a way, you can think of Earth like, like Earth is like a giant satellite. And the way that satellites are, are powered, including the, the, the big geostationary satellites, um, which we're quite familiar, we just launched one actually um, at SpaceX, um, th those will last for 20 years with no maintenance in orbit. Um, literally, no, no, one, no, no one can go to them, so they're designed to zero maintenance. And they're entirely powered by solar and battery. But there's no, there's no fundamental scaling limit. Um, so just as you can power a big satellite purely with solar and a battery, uh, you can power Earth purely with solar and a battery. Earth is a giant satellite. This was all triggered by Twitter. When did this become more than a thought bubble or a, a game for you? When did you become really involved in the process? Um, well, it's certainly never a game, uh, but I, I, I was made aware of it um, by the, the Tesla team that, um, that, that there was really this opportunity to make um, a significant statement about renewable energy to the world to show that you can really do uh, a heavy-duty, large-scale, utility-level battery, battery system and that uh, South Australia was uh, up for the challenge. Then the team asked me, like, oh, are we willing to take a big risk on this? And I said, absolutely. Um, if, if South Australia is willing to take a big risk, then so are we. Some people in Australia want to build new coal-fired power stations. Sure. How, how does that compare in economically with building new renewable energy power stations instead? Yeah, the, the fundamental challenge with coal power stations is that um, it's, it's, they're, they're quite difficult to get financed. Because the, the, the writing's on the wall um, for the long-term future of coal, uh, which is that it doesn't, coal, the coal does not have a long-term future. And so when, um, when one looks at either the establishment of a new coal power plant or doing a, a, a major upgrade of a, an existing coal, coal power plant, when going to investors to get financing for that, investors know that coal does not have a long-term future, so the cost, the capital cost, is incredibly high because they, they want to charge a very high interest rate because they're not expecting it to last 30 years, which is normally the, the length of time that they would want to amortize the value of a power plant. So effectively, coal becomes very expensive because people are not willing to invest in something that doesn't have a great future. Mr. Musk, Stacey Lee from Sky News, Sorry, up the back here. Okay. <laughs> that, well, I can see where the, where the speakers are coming from. Um, this will be built in Jamestown. What does that mean for the community there? How many jobs do you expect this to create up there? Well, I think it, it's, it's a massive installation, so there will obviously be a huge uh, initial input of, of jobs. And I think long term, uh, because it will be three times more powerful than the next biggest battery installation in the world, and we're going to you know, make, make an effort to have it also look good, uh, that it actually will be a, a tourist destination for at least some period of time because you, you just want to see this giant uh, battery farm. But, I mean, I think they're, they're really quite w nicely arranged kind of white obelisks. I mean, if it's sort of, you know, if this got unearthed in the future, it would look like, what, what was this, some sort of art exhibit or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what were they after? I don't know. So I think um, it'll have some value as a, a sort of a tourist spot for a while. And Raquel, if you'd like to elaborate on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, for, especially for the construction phase. And the, the, I, I'll be honest, the operations and maintenance of the battery system are designed to be um, pr pretty self-sustaining, so it's not a significant amount of people who have to be there to upkeep the system for all the construction phase, which will last into December, um, notionally. Um, we'll have it be tens or hundreds of jobs that are being created in Jamestown. There's a, there's a local contractor, CPP, that's uh, won the contract to be part of uh, doing it here. So it's a South Australian company, CPP and they'll be doing that on-ground work, on work. Mr. 
what's, what's the uh, useful life of your batteries and will you, or will you cycle them through continuously? Um, yeah, so the, the, the useful life of the battery, depending on how long, what energy level is um, considered to be the end of life of the battery, is, is sort of on the order of 15 years. But it, it does depend on how heavily the battery is used, what percentage of, of the, how deeply it's discharged, how, how aggressive power is, is added to the pack or removed from the pack. But the electronics can last you know, to 20 to 30 years. Um, and the, 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 the cooling system, the thermal control loop, uh, can also last on that order. So over time, what you can do is you can add more um, power packs to supplement the decline in the energy capability of, of, the, of the older ones and they will seamlessly blend into the system. So it's not as though everything is, is junked. Um, at, you know. And are they recyclable? They are, they are certainly recyclable, and in fact, it, it makes sense to recycle lithium-ion uh, battery packs because the material constituents um, are, are still quite valuable. Um, the primary cost driver, in fact, in the cells is, tends to be nickel. So we can think of it as very uh, nickel-rich ore, um, is one way to think about it. But typically, the, 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 the cells have about 10% of their value, even when they have no energy capability left. The trust considering um, already has a, a high number of uh, wind farms spread around the state. Do you hope that this will be a, a first step into maybe partnering with other organisations as time goes on, if it's a success? Yeah, I think this, uh, this deal is actually going to be incredibly helpful um, in, in, within Australia and around the world. Um, as a proof point for being able to do large-scale utility battery applications. Um, and, and certainly, th th I mean, there's obviously going to be a lot of people looking at it and saying, did, 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 did they get it done in 100 days? Did it work? Are there any issues? Um, obviously, th those are the right questions to ask. Um, and so we're going to make sure that it does. Maybe if I, if I can add something to that. You, we talked about it earlier, the, the, the shift away from coal I mean, I, really, we talk about, you know, why would you even build a new coal plant or even a new gas plant? I mean, I, I, I specifically think that the cost, the, the consistently lowering cost of batteries coupled with renewables is going to fundamentally reshape the energy landscape much faster than anyone thinks it will. We're already seeing that on island grids. We have a project uh, similar in scope to this, much smaller in size uh, on the island of Kauai, where they have too much sun. So now they're only building solar plants paired with batteries, which are essentially baseload generators. They charge it during the daytime, and they charge in the daytime from sun, and they discharge at night to provide baseload power. And so, I, I mean, I think in the very near future, all new renewable energy plants will have batteries coupled with them, just as par for the course, and it's going to totally reshape the fundament of the energy system. Yeah, it, it has to, of course. Just like I said, there's a sort of common sense that if you have solar, you must have battery, because um, otherwise your power is just going to be proportionate to how sunny it is. And <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really obvious. Uh, Mr. Musk, have you actually visited the Jamestown site or will you on this trip to SA? Um, I actually just came right from the airport to here, um, uh, but I, I will visit it before I leave, yes. And how long are you in town for? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think at least until tomorrow. I'm not sure what day, it's Friday, right? <laughs> are there any other questions? Uh, yes. So did, did you see this as a, a financial opportunity for yourself, or did you just see it that you felt sorry for South Australia? <laughs> <laughs> I, certainly don't, I don't, certainly don't feel sorry for South Australia. Uh, this is a great place. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty darn impressed with, with South Australia willing to, to do a project of this magnitude um, that, that's beyond anything else in the world. Like I said, uh, South Australia is doing, doing something that's three times more powerful uh, than anything else on Earth. So, you know, that, that, takes a, that takes a lot of gumption. I do see this as something that, that the world will look at as an example um, and of, of being able to do large-scale um, battery applications for, for the grid that really take a large amount of load. You know, it's really going to be an example to the rest of the world. Um, and, but we need to deliver. We need to, show, we need to get it done. We need to make sure it's working properly. Um, and, um, and we want to do it in less than, a, well, under 100 days. Yeah. Um, there have been a lot of critics federally um, about South Australia's energy policy. Do you implore other states and maybe the federal government to follow suit? Is this, is this the way of the future? I, I think this is, this is definitely the way of the future. And I, I think it's worth uh, other states taking a close look at this and seeing if it's applicable to their, their needs. 
uh, which I suspect in most cases it is. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, could you uh, thank uh, Elon and Cal and uh, for being here? Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have an opportunity to hear from uh, the representatives of NEON, and uh, we also uh, have Mr. Romain de Russo. Thank you, uh, Romain. And also Frank uh, Boitier. Thank you. you could just... <laughs> Thank you. So we're also, um, of course, uh, this NEON is um, a world-leading renewable energy company based in France, but now has a very large proportion of its uh, international operations based here in Australia. It, of course, has the Hornsdale Wind Farm, which is over a 300 uh, megawatt uh, wind farm with uh, a very large number of uh, wind turbines. 99, is it? Right. Um, and so this is an opportunity for them not just to provide the services to South Australia, but also in the balance of the battery uh, to also um, on-sell that particular service and participate in the market. So this represents... Uh, another dimension, if you like, of what we've announced today, which is uh, the future capacity for us to firm up an industrial user and introduce competition into the South Australian part of the market. And this is a critical issue uh, for South Australia to be able to put downward pressure on prices is to actually increase the number of contracts that exist within uh, the South Australian electricity market. So uh, these two gentlemen are also here, willing to answer your questions. Thank you. Chairman, at what stage did you first touch base with the Tesla and From the beginning, we've been looking at possible uh, battery suppliers, and I have to say that Tesla was quickly identified as an uh, outstanding partner with an ability not only to deliver such a large-scale product, but also we strongly believe to help us operate it and integrate it to the grid. The challenge is not only to build it, but it's going to be to have it working with the IMO and, 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 and the grid to deliver. And, and we also understood quickly that there were strong commitments at the highest level of Tesla's organization. So. Um, will you expand the wind farm as well? Are there plans to do other things as well? The wind farm is already the largest renewable generator in South Australia, and uh, it might not be in the plan to expand in this location, but there's a lot of other good locations in South Australia where the wind and solar regime are outstanding to do more wind farm with storage. This is really a pilot of how we should integrate renewable with storage to make long-term sustainable, dispatchable, and competitive energy for South Australia, but also for most of the places in the world. What's the cost to NEON? Are you putting half the bill with Tesla? We are. Can I just ask, how do you plan to use the battery on a, a daily basis and whether uh, the way energy is priced at a wholesale level in South Australia is going to affect that, uh, given we have half our service? So there's, a, there's, first of all, a contract and a commitment to the South Australian government, so the battery will mainly used for the purpose of uh, providing uh, grid security and grid stability and, and, and power reserve. Uh, and, and there will be additional revenues generated by the market. Uh, this, will be, this will be through uh, um, sale of electricity, through FCAS services and so on, but a bit of IP behind that. <laughs> So the Hansdale Wind Farm um, stage two uh, has been built, has been commissioned um, in June this year, 8 June. Uh, the third stage is really well underway. So we have been developing and building the wind farm with Siemens and CPP, South Australian uh, subcontractor for the, the, the electric uh, balance of plants. So in terms of experience and understanding of what is going on on site, we know the site perfectly well. The subcontractors understand the uh, connection 
And we believe um, the FCAS trial, uh, which we're uh, jointly with AEMO and ARENA uh, um, performing on Hansdale 2, will also help us getting through the registration steps, which are important steps in that, in that context. We are not um, that worried on the delivery of the battery. Uh, we are confident the connection will be, will be performed uh, uh, adequately. You're waiting for AEMO sign-off before the 100 day period. Uh, we, we will be working very hard with Audrey uh, and, and the team IAMO, at IAMO sorry, to, to, to make it uh, uh, happen as quickly as possible. We have a very short time frame. Can you, can you guarantee that power prices for consumers, for households and for businesses, will actually go down? I think mean, guaranteeing would be an overstatement, but necessarily uh, the fact that um, uh, FCAS services being provided through competitive sources of uh, renewable electricity would have an impact. Uh, yes, guaranteeing, I'm not sure I would. But. The wind farm is selling electricity uh, between half and two thirds of the price of the average price of the market. So with the storage, we're going to be able to bring this cheap electricity, half of the average price at the moment when the people need it, and not only when the wind blows, and that's really what we want to do. Can you just take us through the arrangement with the South Australian government about when the government has the right to tap the battery and how that arrangement will um, I think we have a, an arrangement where I think 70% of the, uh, the battery is reserved for, for South Australian government purposes, notionally 30% uh, for uh, market-based activity. And there's a series of um, quite uh, complex agreements about way in which we uh, gain access to that. So there's a clear understanding between us about the use of the, the battery for our purposes. And it's also important to note that this is a process which is deemed to evolve. We, we plan with the government and the regulator regular meetings to make sure that the battery is used as well as possible and that we take good lessons and good understanding from this uh, unique example in South Australia and that we'll be able to replicate it in Australia and in other parts of the world. It is a word premier and it means we'll have to work on it to make it as efficient as possible. Have you got uh, further investments in South Australia and the energy sector plan in the future as well? So Newen is, um, is a global IPP, uh, independent power producer, uh, building uh, renewable energy uh, uh, generators. Uh, we have been investing in Australia since 2012, more than 1 billion Australian dollars, and we're planning to invest uh, at approximately the same amount of money uh, in the next 12 to 18 months. South Australia has been uh, has benefited from the core of our investment through the Honsdale Wind Farm and now through the Honsdale Power Reserve. Uh, we have uh, several other projects, including in South Australia. Yes. Do you see much further growth here? Because along with this battery, there is also a new energy security project that you start to sell. Is that going to limit future growth? No, I think we were limited in growing in South Australia without the battery. Now we're really going to start to be able to do real wind in South Australia. It's the beginning. The, the government's initiatives, uh, the energy security plan, uh, is really a game changer in the world and South Australia is uh, going to be seen as of uh, now uh, as a leader in uh, being able to solve the equation of uh, intermittent electricity and grid stability. So uh, uh, Neowen is, is very proud to be part of the exper exper um, experimentation, so that world premiere, and, and under your leadership, uh, Premier, uh, the, the world is going to have the eyes focused on the next uh, four months.